In This Corner of the World is a different kind of war movie. While most movies set in this time period show the front lines of battle, this movie takes a far more reserved approach when describing warfare, but that certainly doesn't mean it's not important. The movie not only details the downfall of the Japanese Empire from a civilian's perspective, it also shows the human side of war. It shows moments of joy, sadness, anger, tragedy, and hope. By focusing on this side of the conflict, you can show ideas rarely explored in modern media and show the true horrors of war from the perspective of a non-combatant. Today, we're going to analyze In This Corner of the World and the hope in tragedy. The movie centers around a young woman named Suzu who lives in wartime Japan. Suzu has to learn to adapt to her new family and the war that's slowly enclosing them. By focusing on this perspective, you can see the struggles and triumphs of the average person living in such a time. Some things remain the same from before the war, but other things change drastically. In many ways, these small tragedies begin to weigh on our characters, like having to worry about the military police accusing you of being a spy, or spending extremely high prices on everyday items like sugar and rice. This weighs on them, as they can't really enjoy modern goods that they were used to anymore. Suzu experiments with various recipes given to her by the other housewives in the neighborhood, and she learns to experiment with these ideas. The creativity and ingenuity Suzu displays makes her family's lives more happy, even with the loss surrounding them. And after Suzu almost gets arrested after being accused of being a spy, the family laughs at the thought. How can the clumsiest person in their entire family be a spy? Everyone in the family has lost their normal routine with the start of the war, but they learn to just move on with their lives and laugh it off, because that's really all they can do. But that simple laughter is more than enough to keep them going. In the film, not only do we see the struggles of Suzu and her family, we also get a glimpse into other characters' lives as well. These characters are important to the story as well, because it lets us know that what the family is going through is not unique at the time. So let's take a quick break from the family and focus on another character in the story. Rin really does encompass the themes of the movie, and she serves as a foil to Suzu. Just a note, some translations have her name as Lin with an L, others have it as a Rin with an R. The name Rin can either be an L or an R. But I believe that Rin with an R is the better romanization of her name in English, so I'll be using that. From a young age, Rin is forced to live in squalor. Suzu meets Rin for the first time when she sneaks out of the attic and takes food from her grandparents. Her grandfather is very well aware of this, but he likes the company Rin gives him, so he's fine with it. Unfortunately, her grandparents pass away and she needs to find another way to live without anyone's support. Eventually, she is forced by economic need to become a comfort woman in the red light district in Hiroshima. She reminisces about the time she spent with Suzu's grandparents, but understands that that's in the past. But she still believes in a future where she can be happy and free to live and be anyone she wants. By the way, Studio Mappa, the company that produced In This Corner of the World, has announced that they are making a director's cut of the movie which will contain more screen time from Rin. This hasn't been released at the time of uploading, so I can't make any claims about it but I can't wait to hear more about her character when the time comes. Another character that's important to the movie is Keiko. While she has a good extended family unlike Rin, several unfortunate factors caused her to lose almost everything. She lost her shop, house, son, and husband to the war. The only thing she has left is her young daughter and the rubble of her destroyed house. But the memory of her old life literally becomes the backbone of their survival, as they use the wood from the house to build a bomb shelter for the family. This shows that the family isn't forgetting the losses that she's had, rather they're trying to use it to make it through the war. While she is characterized as being mean to Suzu, you begin to sympathize with her when she talks about her struggles and all that she's lost, but she keeps on living on for her daughter and for the future. Suzu and her family live in a town called Kure, which is around 13 miles away from downtown Hiroshima. Kure is famous in Japan for its shipbuilding. Almost everyone in the city works for the navy or supports the navy in some way. As such, it becomes a regular target for enemy air raids. This becomes a huge problem for the family, who are already struggling to survive. And because of the increased amount of bombs, they have to be on guard from the bombs at all times. This eventually wears on them, but they continue to persevere, pushing themselves to make it to the other end. This film also goes to great lengths to show the destruction a single conventional bomb can have on a person's life. They see people lose their entire lives in a few short minutes. Luckily, this family lives so far away from the ports that they don't get targeted as much. But Susu can't give any reaffirming words to the people who were unlucky. But somehow, life just keeps on moving on for the family. They still go to work and take care of the house even with the air raids. 
At this point, all they really can do is just keep moving forward, even after seeing all the terrible things they have. From this moment on, I will be spoiling major plot points in the third act of the movie. If you haven't seen it, please skip to the timestamp I've listed on screen now. The movie is the type where you need to go into it blind, and I'd hate to be the one to spoil it for someone, so please check it out if you haven't seen it already. It's a relatively normal day for Suzu, as she is going out with Harumi to the store, but an air raid happens and they are forced to take shelter with strangers. Everything works out for them at first, but unfortunately tragedy strikes. Harumi was killed in the blast, and Suzu lost her drawing hand, which was her only talent in life. This unneeded death devastates the family, and especially Keiko, who I mentioned earlier. They have all lost so much to the war, and it isn't stopping anytime soon. This weighs down on the characters harder than anything else before that. All the deaths weren't personal to them, but it is now. Without Harumi, things just don't feel the same anymore, and this tragic death affects our characters for their entire lives. As the war gets closer and closer to home, the damage caused by it continues to mount up. People are losing their family members and loved ones. Eventually, we see a new type of bomb. This bomb doesn't explode, rather it lights Japan's mostly wooden buildings on fire. These bombs are arguably more powerful than the conventional bombs, because they can burn through an entire neighborhood and they're far cheaper to produce. This shows the true ferocity of this new weapon. It seems to be a normal day in Kure and everyone's going about their normal lives, until they all see a bright flash, and they feel a shaking like an earthquake. But this was no normal flash. This was the Hiroshima bombing. This event would not only change Japan, but it would change how the entire world viewed war. While Suzu doesn't see the bombing directly, she becomes very aware of the damages the bomb has caused. Not only on the city itself, but also on the people who live there. She sees a man who survived the bombing walk over 10 miles on foot just to see his mother, only for her to not recognize him and to die sad and alone. The red light district is completely leveled, with Rin in it. And Suzu's family has been torn apart by the bomb. Her mother is presumed dead, and her little sister has signs of radiation poisoning. This is why when Japan surrenders, it's gut-wrenching. Suzu and the country as a whole went through all this suffering, all this pain, only for it to mean nothing in the end. In many ways, this is the worst tragedy in the whole movie. Why did such a young girl have to lose her life in such a horrible way? Why did an entire city have to be leveled in one day? Why did so many innocent people have to die because of a drawn out war that they were obviously losing? This realization is more painful than any part of the movie for this reason alone. It takes time, but eventually the family rebuilds and begins to hope for a better future. Because that's really all they can do at this point. But in doing so, they are making the future better and brighter for everyone. They also adopt a girl who survived the bombing. This young girl has seen one of the most brutal events in human history. Her mother is dead, and she has nothing to live for anymore. Eventually, she meets Suzu and becomes part of the family, and they begin to build a better and brighter future. That's what this movie is really about, not only about the tragedies, but also about the hope that people have throughout the movie. And this aspect should not be forgotten when talking about this movie. Overall, In This Corner of the World is a truly amazing film that highlights humanity and conflict. While the movie is set in a tumultuous time, it never feels like it's worshipping it. Rather, it feels like a somber reflection of all the losses of war, and chooses to direct its focus on the hope of a peaceful world rather than petty revenge. As we speak, more and more people who lived in this time will never be able to share their stories again. So being able to remember the stories of people who lived in that time period make people aware of the true evils of the war. Oftentimes, we boil down stories of war to simple statistics, but when we do that, we forget about the lives of the people who were lost. So please, at least think about checking out this movie, because these stories need to be remembered by generations to come. Hi, and thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please give me a like, and if you want to see future content, hit the subscribe button and bell icon to hear when I upload next. Thank you, and see you guys next time.